Hello everyone. Before I begin, I would like to get a good idea of my crowd. So with that being said, for those of you who really enjoyed science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, more commonly coined as STEM in secondary school, could you please raise your hands? Okay. Okay. For those of you who raised your hands, you probably weren't the coolest kid in your class, but that's totally fine. Today I can be your redemption for all the social points you thought you lost. For those of you who didn't raise your hands, you should know that that makes me especially excited to talk to you today. However, I do suggest that you brace yourself for how bold I am about to be. I love mathematics. I love technology and even more so, I love science. The gratification I get from solving complex mathematical problems, designing data sheets, and combining my artistic creativity with scientific analysis adds so much dimension to the purpose of my life. I am an inventor. I get excited by a function that creates a perfect calculable curve. Knowing that I am developing skills that will eventually change the electronic devices people use, the machines that generate our electricity, and how your money translates itself from bank to bank makes me feel like I am a fundamental piece at the very beginning of everything the future promises you. Yet, for such exhilarating and important work, I belong to a minority. According to research done by the UNES Science Education Journal in 2021, less than 25% of African students in higher education pursue STEM-related careers. Moreover, according to UNESCO in 2020, research has shown that women are still greatly underrepresented in STEM careers with no more than 30% working in STEM research. Let me put it this way. If a group of 10 students in typical sub-Saharan Africa remained in the same class from grade one to grade 12, only four will graduate with positive feelings towards STEM. And only one of those four will pursue higher education in STEM and build a career with that qualification. More alarmingly, there is only a 30% chance that that one person is a woman. For Africa, on the world stage, a continent that has desired to keep up with the rest of the world, advance technologically and improve our economic development and our capacity to address our own challenges, these statistics should alarm us all. Because this is a crisis. In one of my favorite books, titled The Shuri Effect, the author, Lauren Moale, writes, and I quote, the future in part is being driven by STEM. And STEM needs to be diverse for that very reason. This is because diversity is an important facet of the human experience. Thus, there is a practical and economic imperative for accommodative design. End quote. To me, this was an emphasis on the need for various members of the world's population to be at the forefront of STEM development, including African citizens. 
because Africa will continue to remain at the tail end of the walk into the future if we do not have Africans sitting at the tables where STEM innovation is happening. More so, if African women make up 50.2% of the African population, according to the United Nations Population Prospects in 2023, African women must also be present in these innovations. And that is also why, if more than 60% of African students view STEM-related subjects negatively, more than any other demographic in the world, it should make us all think. For me, it just made my questions very direct. Starting with why. Why is there still an insufficient number of African students making their way into STEM careers? Is it because we have not done enough? Do we still not have the systems and infrastructure in place to spark and maintain STEM development? Or perhaps African youth are simply not interested. This forced me into a sentimental reflection on my own 17 years of life. I was lucky enough to be born into a household that embraced technology and mathematics and idealistic conversations about why the sky is blue. Both my mother and my father have degrees in IT and computer science. And as their firstborn daughter, they expected a lot from me. When they discovered that I literally could not tell my left from my right, they had a meeting in the family living room and made sure that by the time we left that living room, I could distinguish my right hand from my left hand without fail. I was only five years old, but hey, look how good I turned out. For them, I had to be the very best at anything and everything that I decided to do, or at least part of the group where the best resided. And this encouraged them to motivate me into my strengths. My parents paid attention to my interests. When they discovered I liked numbers, they gave me number games. When they discovered I liked problem solving, they gave me puzzles and Legos. And even at some of my most fragile moments in my earlier education, when homework became too difficult, or my 92% in mathematics or a similar score in science was used to motivate the boys in class by stereotyping me, my parents kept me grounded. I once had a teacher say to me in front of our entire class, a girl cannot be better than a boy at a subject made for men. And even then, my parents broke every opportunity for the status quo working against me to discourage my passion for STEM. And luckily, along the way, I was able to meet wonderful teachers who did the same. It is also because of this support system that last year, I was chosen to take part in an international, fully funded summer program known as Tech Girls an initiative by the Department of State in the United States of America to develop the analytical skills of over 100 girls from 37 countries with deep interest and passion for STEM. And after spending an entire month taking university-level engineering classes and job-shadowing powerful women at some of the most robust research organizations in the world, my dreams for Africa evolved. Even now, as I stand here before you today, the landscape of possibility for STEM on this continent is so vast that it does not exceed the extremities of my own imagination. And so, because of my experience with Tech Girls, I sat down with all these things I was thinking about and realized that the vulnerabilities of most African youth have stripped them from the privileges that very few have had. So I decided to kickstart an initiative with Tech Girls known as Catwish, which is set to be fully launched this July. Catwish 
comes from the Bemba expression, katuishi, which means I do not know. As a scientist, I spend a lot of time questioning. Numbers, phenomena, algorithms, patterns, colors. And I spend a lot of time trying to find out what I do not know. Katuishi. And so I gave it this name because I believe it represents the power of inquisitiveness in STEM. And so Catwish will be a platform that will allow African youth to access STEM-related material, including worksheets, stories about high-profile Africans in STEM, and educational games that will allow them to develop their spatial abilities. This will happen through a series of workshops and an extensive website that will make deliberate efforts to bridge the divide for young Africans in STEM. Now, coming back to the power and importance of STEM, I think it's time that we started shifting the narratives for the next generation by shifting their perspective. STEM is not reserved for a particular group of people in a particular environment. To all the parents in this room, the mentors, the guardians, the educators, you need to start creating space for African youth to develop their spatial and intellectual abilities, just like my parents did for me. When you notice something in a child, something they're good at, something they enjoy doing, invest in it. And when it gets too difficult, motivate them to continue. You could be sitting on a gold mine. To all the African boys and girls who may be watching this, to the little African girl who looks and sounds like me, yes, STEM can be a very demanding field, but we have reached a point in the history of mankind where you need to start making demands from STEM too. Because I believe it is just as easy for you to make your way as an engineer, a pilot, a software developer, a surgeon, or whatever it is you would like to be just as much as the next person. All you need to do is believe in that dream too. Because we are the moving pieces of the next scientific revolution. So let us make a collective decision to move further together. Thank you.